Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to share a concept about symmetry today. This is medicine for difficult passages. It works, I've put it to the test. I'm gonna share some very personal experiences and weaknesses. Uh, in my last video last week, I was talking about achieving your potential is more of a motivational type video and a few people in the comments said, we wanna know what you did to help fix that technical issue you were having. Please expound on that. Please tell us what you did. So here I am, I'm gonna open up about this. I've talked a bit about this in previous videos, uh, this idea of symmetry, but um, I'm, I wanna really dig in and do a proper tutorial. Uh, I owe all this knowledge to Logan Skelton. He's the one who taught it to me. He taught it to me um, about 10 months ago, I think it was. Uh, I was in a pretty dark place with right hand ascending scales. I'll show you what was happening in my hand. Goes to show you that even after 30 years of playing, you can sometimes uh, develop weird uh, problems. And I was like, I don't know how to fix this. Like I went through a lot of the methods that we go over on this channel and I'm like, I can see what's happening, but I'm not really sure. And he showed me this symmetry method and I have put it to the test over the last 10 months or so, and it absolutely works. Funny enough, about two or three months after Logan taught me this, Mark andre Hamlin came out on Tonebase with a video about symmetrical inversion. So if you want his masterful technique and demonstrations, you can go watch that. I'm gonna stick with a bit more basic skills today. I'm gonna do uh, a scale on arpeggio, and then I'll do Alberti bass, because I know a lot of people struggle with Alberti bass, um, and how you can apply this, and the benefits that I've personally seen. So digging into the problem that I was having, I, um, I was playing the end of the Chopin concerto in um, E major, and it's so funny. The thing that freaked me out the most in that entire piece was just those two uh, up and down B major scales, and it's like, oh my gosh, B major is the easiest scale. And it wasn't that it was so hard. To, I learned it in two seconds, like you know, up and down. That's like the easiest thing in the whole piece to learn. But as I practiced it more and more, and as I got it faster and faster weird stuff started happening and I was like, man, I'm working really hard for whatever reason. Now, I've talked a lot on this channel about finger staccato, about high fingers, about rhythms. And I really wanna hone in on the finger staccato. Talked about it in that Chopin Etude video. I've talked about it in a lot of videos. Well, I just noticed I was working really hard, and you can actually watch a recording of me and my wife playing uh, that at a local live stream concert that was just in um, here in Utah, and I thought the performance went pretty well. And when I texted a few friends and um, even a couple teachers, they're like, I don't think you have anything to worry about, Josh. And I was like, but it bugs me. I, I'm kind of OCD perfectionist. And I was like, I just noticed that like when I play left-hand scales, um, it wasn't feeling as good as my right hand scales, left hand descending, right hand ascending. So um, I kept working. I kept trying so many different solutions. I do just countless things. I don't know if I've ever had to work this hard at anything on the piano besides maybe double thirds trills. Um, and I was like, I'm going to get this. This is a basic skill. And the problems really started happening 180 uh, for four notes per click, uh, 180 on the metronome and above. So it didn't affect me at slow speeds, but it started to, I started to notice that I was um, working extra hard and like pulling in too hard into my hand. And so through a lot of work, I started to kind of come out of it. And then I, I said, Logan, this is so stupid, but will you meet with me um, and take a look at this? And I actually sent him a couple videos in slow motion with my phone and said, what's happening here? So we went over this and he said, you know, you're doing something weird. Uh, this is what's happening. You're kind of lifting too really high. And I think that's the problem. And so he gave me these little exercises. He said, can you do, can, we're just going to do this. And he said, do this. And then there. And I noticed, and they're a lot better than they were when I played it for him in the lesson, but I noticed that I was starting, 
and again, three and four and five were starting to like work too hard and pull more into my hand as I tried to get faster and faster. So this was a speed induced problem. And he said, I want you to start working symmetrically. And I was like, oh, like, you know, when you learn skills like that. And he's like, no, he's like, that's not what I mean. I mean, actual symmetry. He said, symmetrical points on the piano are DNA flat. And I wasn't sure what he meant by that. But if you think of a little box, as you can see, um, the piano is made up of two, two and three black keys. So pretend that this is a little box that encapsulates your two black keys and pretend that this is a little box that encapsulates your three black keys. Okay, so within this box, there's a center point, which is D. So as we go out or in, everything is gonna be the same sequence of notes. So whites, blacks, whites, whites, blacks, whites, blacks, whites, blacks, whites, whites, blacks, and so forth. Same thing on A flat. So that's what he meant by point of symmetry. And, and by the way, everybody should go watch that Hamlin video. It's amazing. He's, I mean, he's got some of the greatest technique in history. And also, what a nice guy. Um, I've only met him once in person when he played a concert here in Utah. Um, but what a, what a great guy. Uh, just a funny, personable, brilliant man. So he said, so when you're working on this Chopin... If you start to notice weird things happening, you can do this. And you can practice that symmetrically. So what you have to do is you have to say, okay, E is my starting note. Okay, let me find what box that's in. It's in the two black key box. Okay, now let me find where it is in relation. What's the symmetrical note? Well, it would be this note. Okay, and then I go up to the black key, black, black, white, black, black, white, black, 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 white. It seems like it's utterly complex. It actually feels wonderful. I actually talked to Susan Dulmeyer, uh, one of my other teachers. She's like, yeah, isn't it amazing how the hands are symmetrical? She's like, try writing your signature um, in one hand, and but put a pen in the other hand too. And she's like, you will draw pretty much an identical signature. But if you try to draw your signature reversed in your left hand, you're going to have no idea what you're doing. But as soon as you put that uh, into practice, um, I'm sure there's some right brain, left brain uh, science going on here. So <laughs> I'm not going to get into that because I don't know it. I'm just going to show you how you can use this to fix your piano problems. So the the, the second finger kind of coming up and over was was the main issue that I discovered. But for a while, I thought it was three because as I'd come here three would want to go under. So through a lot of work, I noticed that I'm actually making harder movements in the right hand. I was pulling harder and my left hand was just so fluid and relaxed. But after a lot of sy symmetry work, you can see it's really helping. I'm in that stage right now. It's not second nature yet. It's getting there. Um, I've made a lot of progress over the last few months, but I'm sharing this journey. I'm, I'm an open book here, as you guys can see. A lot of classical pianists hide, between e hide behind ego and secrecy. This channel is trying to dispel that among the whole classical world. So judge me all you want, but I'm being very forthright and forthcoming in this video, showing you exactly what I've thought about over these um, months. Beyond what Logan said of just like, hey, your finger's doing this, I noticed other motions were going on, which brings me to the point of why this was so helpful for me. And it has provided so much relief. And actually, I'm playing things that before I had this problem, um, and, and this was never an issue of like my hand working too hard in the upper three notes, like kind of pulling in too much. I'm playing stuff better now than I ever did back then. Uh, it, it's been pretty miraculous. So don't underestimate the power of this. So I noticed that as I played in the right hand, I would sometimes kind of extend four and notice, and I'm still working on that movement right there. Don't, don't let it get too extended like this. Now, when I'm really going 
my hand is pretty flat like that. And that's actually the position you want, or at least that I like um, for a black key, because it, a uh, scale like B major or D flat major or G flat major. Um, Cause if you look on the overhead cam, these scales just feel so, so good. And you can see, I'm not really moving it. What I was doing in my right hand is I was going here. Then I would have to go back out, back out. So you can see why it only happened at high speeds. Because if you're playing at 120 and you do this tucking, it's hard for me to simulate the old bad habit, which is a good thing. Um, but it, it wouldn't stop you from playing in that tempo. It was when I got really high and I was like, I want to have that same looseness. I look at, um, uh, I mentioned him before in the first scherzo video, Hayato Sumino fine Japanese pianist, um, played beautifully at the Chopin competition, and he plays the list. He has a really fun list Rhapsody number no. 2 video on YouTube, and those scales, those scales are pretty fast, but his are like, blam, like they are so fast, and he is not overworking at all. So I noticed that rather than coming up too much, my left hand was just going here. The, the thumb was kind of pulling into the hand a little bit, and then the hand stayed pretty flat. So as I learned that, I started to stay a lot closer to the keys. And it was really magical how that started to fix my technique and really help my confidence overall. When you have a weird issue, like after 30 years of playing and you're having a hard time in, in fast speeds with something as easy as a B major scale, you, it really like destroyed my confidence. Like it, it was bad. But I worked through it, and it's going really well right now, and um, it's helping me in a lot of things. And I'm putting this symmetry to work in other situations. So I thought it would be fun to also do a um, an arpeggio for you guys and show you. Well, first of all, let's look at that B major, because you might be thinking, you're not playing B major in the left hand. So I went here. It's actually a D flat major scale is the sym symmetrical inversion of the right hand B major, okay? So let's take something in the left hand. For, for most instances, people are gonna struggle more in their left hand, unless you're left hand dominant. Um, this was a weird issue in my right hand. I'd say 98% of techniques in my right hand are better than my left hand. But there's a few outliers in the left hand that have had to teach my right hand. So let's do the opposite now. Let's say that you are struggling with... Um, like maybe it'll just take an easy one, D major. Most people have a hard time going back down. Okay, now the problem with symmetrical inversion is we have a limited keyboard, so you can't do this uh, like up and down four octaves, um, especially with arpeggios, you run out of notes a lot faster. So let's just take it there, okay? so. Let's just say you're working on a two octave arpeggio in D major. Okay, so we need to find the symmetry point here. Well, this is our symmetry point, okay? So you can do this here, or you could do it up an octave if you wanted to create space. If you're gonna create space, I might even center my body between those two. Okay, so we'll go here. Okay, now, how I like to think about this, because it made my head spin when I was first learning this. I was like, how do I do this? So, And now I need to do that. Do not play this. That's not what it is. Okay, so I go here. And then if you look at this as a mirror image, you go to the note right after this first black key. Okay, so I would go here. The last group, the last key of the three black keys is our next note. So you have G minor, but you're playing it with different fingering, obviously. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna cross. Oh, sorry. Gosh, now I'm getting confused. Okay. Now, if your right hand arpeggios are really good, you're gonna start noticing that, and you could even, 
could go to there if you want to give yourself even more of a challenge. You're going to start noticing movements that you might be making with your stronger hand. Just like I noticed that here, I noticed that I'd come here. Look at the difference between those positions. This is all pulled in. Second finger's ready to go. This is all out. Why would something like this happen? I had just played all of the Paganini etudes as well. Look what this does to your hand. So while I don't know the exact situation that made me start to do this, I started to notice it in that Chopin concerto, started to notice a little in that Paganini etude number six. Because there are so many demands placed on this right hand, that's, I think, why it kind of lost its way with a basic skill that the left hand hadn't done. If you asked me to play this passage in the left hand, man, I would be so slow. I'd be, yeah, I would be clunky, okay? So even if you're working on your stronger hand, it benefits from the companionship and the support of the left hand. So let's say, though, that we're targeting left hand. Again, you might have some weird movements. I'm not gonna try to simulate some weird movement. I'm just gonna be genuine here and just show you what I'm thinking. So I notice, I'm gonna watch my right hand. Let's say that your right hand is really good with arpeggios and your left hand is terrible. So I'd go here and say, okay, what am I doing with my hand? I'm really preparing that. I'm, I'm rotating. We've talked a lot on this channel about doorknob rotation, kind of the semicircle rotation, it's waving rotation, and then a little bit of a wrist hinge as well. I'm really doing all that. And then the thumb's right ready to go on that. So okay, and you can even just do this. I also like to do this method eyes closed because you can really feel like, oh, you guys can't see this on the camera, but because um, my hand's covering it. But is my is my thumb touching that little bit of flesh, or is it just hovering under it? And you start to feel things, and then after a while, you'll notice that that even the strong hand, even if your strong hand was your right hand. Ooh, that feels even better when you start to do things symmetrically. Let's take one last example, just so I don't keep you guys here all day. Um, let's make up a little uh, Alberti bass. So we have this. Let's go to F major. We'll go B flat. Something like that. Okay, so remember our box. So if we start on F, we're in our three-note box. We're on the bottom of it. So we would go to our box up here because we want to create a little room. We don't want to be cramping and overlapping in here. Okay, so let's go to this box. Go to the top note. Okay, so... Okay, so notice that I'm on this box now and I'm on the first note. So I go to the first note of this box. And I go a third up from that. Okay. Even just this... My right hand's definitely faster at this type of stuff, um, but left hand's keeping up pretty well. Okay, now try this. Okay, how do we find that? D's our point of symmetry, so we just go to D. And make sure the fingering is identical anytime you do sym symmetrical um, practice. And then here, okay, I'm just on the outsides of the two black keys. So I'm going to go here and then here and go to the outside of this box. Go to the outside of this box. Okay, so go to there. And then sorry. I really enjoy this. I would challenge you guys to learn it. It's a little bit of a learning curve just to kind of get comfortable uh, making up the symmetry and seeing mirror images rather than parallel or contrasting like, oh, this is B major. 
That's B major in contrasting motion. This is B major in symmetry. It sounds weird. It's often hideous sounding. As you can see there, but it really does work. And it's gotten me out of a lot of jams that were not just the thing that I was originally working on, which was my right hand ascending scales on these black key ones. Because the other scales actually felt fine, like A major, F major, G major, even stuff like F sharp minor, where I had a lot of like black and white key intricacies. Those never really challenged me. It was B major. And for a short, like maybe one or two month stint, it was C major as well. Um, but that started to get a lot better as I worked. If you're doing C major, you're not gonna do this. You can, but it doesn't feel quite the same because look, I'm on these three blacks and I'm not on that. So if you're gonna do C major, you'd start here and here. The last piece of advice I wanna give on this video is um, don't give up. Uh, this was pretty discouraging for me to go through and I'm coming out on the other side of it. Um, and I was able to still function as a pianist. As you saw, I, I put out some really difficult tutorials <laughs> during this time um, that I was, you know, uh, suffering mentally. I did all the Paganini etudes. I did the Chopin concerto. We did a Scriabin etude. We did Bach Busoni Chacon. Um, we, even these... <laughs> Those gave me a run for, for my money, and I did a lot of symmetrical practice on those, and they turned out just fine. So don't give up. Continue to search for the solution and surround yourself with amazing musicians whenever possible. So big thanks to Logan Skelton for helping me with this. If any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I'll leave a few links for um, some things in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips I use daily to help me in my own practice and performing and also in my teaching. So check that out if you haven't already. I'll also leave a couple links for my paid courses um, if you'd like to go even deeper than this channel goes over. And then a gear kit, all the gear I use to make these videos. Um, lastly, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that helps to get this uh, channel and this information out to more people. Um, I, my goal is to spread as much good knowledge while I'm alive here on the earth um, as I can about piano discoveries, challenges that I face, and um, how I've made it through these. Today, we really opened up a lot into a, a challenge I've faced, and I hope it's encouraging to see how I've worked through this. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.